All right, Glenn, let's let's get after it. What happened here? What happened? It's not a great story, man. It's really like I, I wish it was as radical as when I broke my collarbone snowboarding, <laughs> but it is so isn't. It was just it was really embarrassing. Actually, I was, uh, you know, I have, a, I have a cat that's 20 years old. She's very, very old. And uh, we've had her. I've, I've had her pretty much her whole life. Um, and then we got a couple dogs a couple years ago. Did you kick the dog? I didn't kick the dog. Mm. Did you kick the cat? <sighs> trying to make my neck hurt. Well, that's all. Well. Thing. The toe neck connection. Oh, you didn't is. get this. <laughs> well, so so yeah. Okay, all right. So so I think I broke my toe yesterday, but then I woke up this morning, and I and and my neck was fucked up. <laughs> so I was like, oh my god. Oh, I didn't see up. that in the text. All I saw was were, were photos of your foot, and I couldn't get past it. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, all right. So I'll get to the neck thing, but. Uh, <laughs> So, and it may, maybe, maybe what happened, how I broke my toe is what triggered the neck to begin with or set, set me up for neck failure. <laughs> uh, but uh, long story short, we have to put up a, a gate, right? So our house is divided in half. The cat has one half of the house. <laughs> <laughs> and then all of you live on the other side. <laughs> uh, and, and the you've given the, the cat, other. you've awarded the cat half your home? Well, <laughs> the cat has not... Uh, the cats and dogs just they can't, you know, they're not living allowed. in harmony. No, the we cats the and humans, dogs, they can't live together. They yeah. can't they just can't live together in 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 some circumstances. I when cats and dogs do live together uh peacefully, is that I, I always imagine that's because the dog was there either the dog and the cat came at the same time, or uh and the cat was a kitten, mm -hmm. or the dogs were there first. Mm -hmm. That's and what I've got. Comes yeah. into the that's what I've got. And then the cat's like, okay, what am I doing? Same. Dogs, yeah. cats getting along just fine, but dogs were there first. Yeah. Cat but, came in. But when the cat came in, was introduced in our house, the cat kicked the dog's ass. Same. Like, Same. like I mean, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then <laughs> established dominance. Absolutely. And now Same. it's. It's stasis. And yeah, yes, our cat, stasis. my cat was like, I'm from the streets. You know, like, bah. Yeah. And the dogs were like, I'm from somewhere fancy. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where I'm from. I'm created. I'm from, from their wombs. Yeah. Yeah, my cat is 20, so she can't do that. No, she yeah, doesn't have yeah, the ability yeah. to do that. And my my dogs just look at her and they're just like, oh, delicious. Uh, or I just want to play with that yeah, I wanna thing or whatever, you know. Get it so, riled up. Anyway, so we got to keep them separated. Um, and, uh, and so we have the uh, dog gate and the dog gate's not that hard to step over, you know, but it's a little awkward. And sometimes you snag your toe on it, mm -hmm. right. Or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like you just kind of kick it a little bit and you're like, it's annoying. And then you just keep moving. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to guess that that enrages you. When yeah. it happens, it enrages you, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know the feeling. I've sure, tripped over yeah, that thing a couple yeah. times, and your first reaction is like, "Why the fuck?" You're is like, "God, I, mm, I hate this fucking gate." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. In this particular instance, though, I really caught the almost the whole foot. Were you moving at a good clip? I was carrying a bunch of stuff. Oh, I had Jesus. a bunch of stuff did in my hands. Did it go flying everywhere in a humorous way? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, yes, actually, it did. Oh well, that's good. I was carrying. <laughs> I had a. I had a metal like a, you know, a stainless steel water bottle and something else. <laughs> so you got a good clang when you dropped yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it, it was even better though. It was that Jill had a suitcase like right near where I was falling also <laughs> that was upright. So I trip over the gate. I fall. I'm basically doing a face plant, right? The water bottle goes flying out of my hands. It, it clangs super loud onto the ground. The only thing that saves me is the suitcase. I grabbed the suitcase. So instead of having to land on the hard ground, I, I like, you know, grabbed the suitcase and just like landed on the suitcase with my hands. You know what I mean? And I was like, uh, you know, Jill comes firing out of the out of the office. She's on a phone call and she's like, something happened. Something <laughs> happened. And then she comes firing out of the office and she's like, she's like, are you OK? And I was like, I was like, yeah, I just I tripped over the gate. I was like, I. I I hate that fucking gate. I think I, you know, cursed at the gate a little bit, but I was like, no, but I'm, I, I think I'm okay. I'm, I'm all right. I'm fine. And I was with my buddy uh, Rich Appel because we were doing a writing session, and uh, and Rich, <laughs> Rich is just laughing at me. Um, and I was like, okay, no, I think I'm, I think I'm fine. I'm like, I hate that fucking gate. We got to get. Why can't? All right, whatever. And then so Rich and I go downstairs to the, to, to to my office to to work, and all of a sudden, like, I just start. I'm like, oh something wrong with that toe and then i looked at it and there was like a little like it looked like it was kind of jutting out on the side a little bit like like maybe i i don't know like maybe i broke it broke it yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. So I think I broke the toe. I don't know how the toe got broken, by the way. I didn't land on the toe. I didn't. That's not even what got snagged on the gate. Were you barefoot? I, no, I was wearing like slides. <laughs> Did they go flying as well? Oh, do you have cameras? No, you, no, I you have like security it's cameras it's and shit, right? I would inside. love to find no, this no. video. No, I don't have them inside. Oh, we drew yeah. the line at having security cameras inside. Yeah, we were weird. like, that's just creepy. Yeah. Um, I don't think the shoes went flying. I think I managed to keep the the slides on. Uh, and maybe that's what broke my toe. I, I don't know. But it's, uh, and then I woke up this morning. It was, yeah, I, oh, I sent yeah. you guys the picture. Maybe we yeah. should put it on the podcast. We'll that's pretty yeah. gross. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty We've nasty. been saying we want to yeah, get more feet normal. on this we podcast. We got to get more right? feet on this so, podcast. We'll yeah, that. yeah. We yeah. Just, I established that people are obsessed with uh, people's feet. So, yeah, why not? And then I woke up this morning, totally unrelated, possibly. And just, and I was like, uh, like, I, it was like one of those things where, you know, you're 46 years old and uh, my alarm goes off and, you know, I, I go to get up out of bed and I was like, oh, ugh. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> so now I'm walking around my house, like trying to get ready I'll to come here this morning. There. And I'm like, I can't, I, I'm actually, I can walk fine, but it, it it's slowing me down a little bit. Cause like I make whatever it's uh, <laughs> to me the whole time. <laughs> Let's just move on to something else. <laughs> I drank a lot last night. Really? Yeah. Again? Oh, because you went out. I went out, but I didn't go. Emmy parties? Yes. Caitlin wanted to go. Caitlin was nominated for an Emmy. And right. I, and we did not go to the Emmys, but we went to the, she wanted to go to the after parties. To be clear, she was not nominated for It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia because that doesn't happen. No, that's, that's impossible. <laughs> she was nominated for Hacks. Yes. Um, and so we went to the after party, but it didn't start until nine or nine thirty. Now I'm I'm usually in bed at nine thirty. At ten o'clock, I'm in. I'm yeah, definitely that's a late start to a party. That's yeah, like, yeah. at this point in life, oh. it's late. You got to edit. It's a school night, right? So you it's know you're gonna night. have to we, get up We both early. had to get up. We both had to get up nice and early. By the way, that hotel room, you didn't get the get the nanny or babysitter to no spend the night. With what the time kiddos? did you guys leave that Sunday night party? Uh, uh, oh, late, late, twelve thirty. Oh, actually, I have an amazing story about that, but I want I, I'll, well, I'll tell that later. Go ahead. <laughs> it, 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 I was just commiserating with how 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 I was feeling. I'm actually feeling okay, but so you, you're I a little, you're a, a little hungover. I drank an entire Manhattan before I left the house because <laughs> sure. because why not? Because yeah, was you pre Manhattan time. It was past Manhattan time. It was it was it, <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. not only like <laughs> I want the body. Your body started to get the like, shakes. Um, hello. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What's, <laughs> what, what's going on? Now, usually you drink a Manhattan and go to sleep, but now I'm drinking the Manhattan. I'm going out. This man's unable to have to like go through a night without having a Manhattan. So, yes. what time do you usually have your Manhattan? <laughs> I, I usually have it around <laughs> seven o'clock. It's about like six forty. Yeah. Six forty-five. My body's like, okay, you know, where is it? Seven. It's like, yeah, now it's time. Seven fifteen. It's pissed. Yeah, you you need you're 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 well, starting to yeah. with food. After no, dinner? I eat dinner. I eat dinner first, mm -hmm. so it's on a it's on a full stomach. But it's a good three shots of whiskey. Plus oh, I've a, seen your Manhattan. Yeah, yeah, three 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 sh shots. Something about it's. I don't actually measure it. Now, when you say three shots, are we talking big, one and a half ounce a shots? Or it's are we like talking blue hole one ounce? size? Like, <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, the blue hole. Yeah, yeah, I like, fill it up to, as we've discussed. I fill it up to the brim, but it's bigger than those glasses. There, it's 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 three shots to to one. So it's three shots of um, of bourbon and one shot of vermouth, and I can handle that. Um, so I'm feeling pretty good when I go to the party, but sure. then I had, you had four you, old, old fashions at, over the the party. at the party. Four two, old fashions? I went to two parties. I went to the after oh, party. for a hangover. I know. That, I, I, I think sugar in I metabolize the alcohol differently now. I, I don't know. Yeah, what so, do I, yeah. so do I. So do I. And, and I can just drink and drink and drink. I don't oh, know what's oh, going on. Oh, mine's gotten worse. Oh, no, gotten mine's, I've gone the opposite way. Yeah, yeah mine's yeah, gotten better. I don't, I don't know what's, I feel fine. I was dead. On Monday morning, I woke up just being like, what? Was I thinking, man? It's a school day. I gotta get, I gotta get the kid to school. I, I'm like, I'm, I can't, I can't drive a car. So for the I, listener, what we're yeah. talking about is there's a there's a big pre Emmy party that happens uh, the Sunday night before the Emmys, and we uh, went to this uh, went to this party, and you know you see a bunch of friends that you haven't seen in a really long time, and you get after it. Yeah. yeah, which we don't do very often these days. No, this this year the party was very loud. There was some live Snoop music. Snoop Dogg performed. That was very cool. Fifty Cent performed. That was very yep. cool. And, they, and it sounded great, but it was a little harder to socialize. Yeah, and, and, I, and uh, you can hear it in my voice. That's not the alcohol. That's me screaming over the that's the concert. Here. So that's two nights in a row that that we went out. Yeah. So what we were screaming over the music, mm -hmm. you know, uh, that night, and then you know I broke my toe and screamed about that <laughs> some more and ruined my voice even more, which is why my voice is messed up. And then. Mm. 
something else happened I screamed about too, but we won't get into that. Uh, but what was your great story at the party? You said you had yeah, an amazing. Not, okay, well, I, 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 I'm building it up too much, but uh, <laughs> this is amazing. So, so um, you know, FX was kind enough to provide us with a with a car. Okay, what time did you leave the party? At that night? Yeah. Uh, 11.30, something like that. Okay, what time did you leave? Yeah, like midnight. Okay, like okay. That, yeah. So the party was supposed to go to midnight, right? So my car was booked apparently to midnight. So we left at 1230. My car was fucking gone. <laughs> and I'm texting the guy and he's like, he was like, he was like, no, you were supposed to, I was supposed to drop you off at midnight. And I was like, buddy, I don't have a curfew. What the fuck are you talking <laughs> oh, about? Wait a second. Yeah. Uh, same thing for me. So we left, now I'm piecing it together, <laughs> but we left at like 1150 and the guy's like, good, I'm glad you're leaving because you have the car to, to midnight. And he was very, he was really scary like sized man yeah uh, and he was a very sweet guy and he kind of like was he liked Mar me and mary elizabeth so he would like was staying a little bit later for us but yeah they they were like yeah there's like a pumpkin effect where you know like at midnight this thing's gone and, and you're yeah, yeah you're, i couldn't believe it we're walking out of this party you know it's a it's it's a very fancy emmy party everybody's dressed up in cocktail everybody's got like you know, let's talk about champagne problems. Jesus uh, okay, Christ. I, I, it's unbelievable. Exactly. I, it's this unbelievable. reminds me of the last episode when we the, one of the tweets was something about how like, yeah. these tired old <laughs> actors <laughs> complaining about like, their lives. This is, this, is, hey, this is what you get, guys. Uh, you know, like, don't, there's so you don't have like to these, watch it. You don't have to watch this If it's this not shit, you, you, but we're irritated about our fancy things. <laughs> Listen, my, my, we're hungover. We're I know tired. you're on the way to work right now. And you're listening to this, and you're and you're about to get up on a roof for yeah, eight and hours. Yeah, I get that. Okay? I get that. But Glenn's limousine left my, yeah. <laughs> the party that he was at, and well, couldn't take Tim listen, back don't to his give house. Me the discount card. It's so big he can don't give, give half of that it to a cat. at noon. No, yeah, that's I mean, this, is, this is insane. His like, house is so big he gives, he gives half of it to a cat, yeah. the other half to a dog. Yeah, and, and then I go. By the way, I don't know if you also caught this, but Jill came out of her office. Because she was concerned about me. And then I went down to my office. <laughs> oh, so in a, two in a, offices in a furnished in one house. basement. It What's rare for like? California because that's an earthquake yeah. nightmare. That's a good, that's, that, can, that can become a tomb. No, no, no. <laughs> there's, there, there are, we've got escape hatches. Don't worry about it. Uh, <laughs> He's had escape hatches put into his domicile. This is exactly. a man with tunnels. That's code, and that's code baby. That's code. You got to have, have an escape route. But it's embarrassing. You know, it's all these fancy people here. You know, you're, you're walking out of the party. You see a lot of your friends. They're all walking out. Everybody's getting into their cars. I see Paul Walter Hauser there again. And I'm like, and, and Jill was like, hey, maybe we can jump in with Paul. And I was like, that's just, that's embarrassing. <laughs> it's like, I can't do that, man. So we called an Uber. And Uber Black. <laughs> yeah. An yeah. Uber SUV. Yeah. And it, did that take you home? It, yeah. And it got there in one minute. And, and it took <laughs> us to the hotel. Oh, great. Because we, oh, yeah, we were smart enough to get a hotel room that night. Because sure. we didn't want to have to wake up and take the kids to school. Sure. So we was had- Was this like the Four Seasons or something in that? I, I don't know how you so somewhere in Beverly Hills. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah, 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 yeah. The weird thing about those after parties, though, man, lots of upset people oh, pretending oh, like really? they weren't. Oh, yeah. Oh, you can feel that oh, there's a palpable they, yes. there's a palpable disappointment and there's sadness. Uh, because look, here's here's the the truth of it. There is not that we would really know, but in talking to many friends who are nominated year after year after year who oh. don't win, oh. we act. So we're we're never invited to the party. Or, we're never to, even nominated. Yeah, which, so, which, which we're not which, even asked to like no, present an no. award. Which which pisses us off to a certain extent, but it frees us up that night. As opposed to people that get dressed up starting oh. at two o'clock in the afternoon because it's West Coast time. It's sure. 100 degrees. They go there. They sit there. And the first, second, third award of the night is presented. They don't get it. And they got to sit there for three yeah. hours. Yeah. Poor people. Oh, Listen, all you guys that are on your way to work this morning, <laughs> yeah. you know, you do, don't know what doing it's like your roofing, to have your to plumbing. Be Brought to a fancy party and and given a free beautiful dress or tux it's, and it's yeah it's air conditioned in there but it's too cold <laughs> yeah and it's and not, your tux is a little your tux is a little tight because you want it to fit right because yeah. yeah. you've been stress eating because you think you're going to win some big award and have to give a speech or you're starving because you've been starving yourself to fit into your tuxedo uh, or your dress yeah yeah. And, and so you're suffering in that regard. And then there you got to sit there and listen to some uh, funny stand-up comedian, you know, present all these awards. And uh, boy, I tell you, it's, it's, just like, it's just like plumbing. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? I'll it's say Kevin. I watched a little bit of it because um, because Caitlin was on a show that was nominated and uh, Keenan was the host. He's really funny. Oh, Keenan was Keenan's the, oh, amazing. Yeah. He was really Keenan funny. I love. I thought he was really really yeah, funny. yeah, yeah. and a great guy. But man, great. how unbelievably self congratulatory is the entire bro? I mean, Dude. that's what the whole thing is anyway. But man, it is like an. They won't even have editors on the show. They got arbitrary kicked. awards for imaginary achievements. Sure. I mean, it's absolutely. <laughs> I mean, but really, like, yeah. it's like it's true. You can't. There's no way to qualify it. Yeah. You know, like, so if you win a green jacket for, uh, for the Masters, you won that motherfucking yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah, showed yeah. up for four days and you got yeah. the ball in the hole and less shots than anybody else, and there's no disputing it. Yeah. And like, well, you win any kind so of acting award, and you're like, I don't know, like. How can you win like best comedy actor and then like leave a party and bump into like Danny McBride? <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? Exactly. And be like, oh, right. this guy's not even like on the radar. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he doesn't get, he doesn't get, he's, he's, he's one of the funniest people on the planet. Exactly. He's yeah, you. He's yeah, yeah, you. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all there's a, it's all madness. A, a common misconception amongst uh, Hollywood people that, or maybe the, the general public, that the awards were created just as. Yes, self congratulation, but also as like a marketing employee, just to get people to pay sure. attention to the. So I did a little research into this because I was like, wait, what? Why? Why was this started? It seems like a interesting and fascinating. You're researching kind of, what? What started the Emmys? Yeah, what started the, like the Oscars, the Emmys? Sure, like, got what, it. And it, it was like way more nefarious than that. Uh -huh. It was that the studio heads who were used to having people under contract for years and years noticed that the the artists were starting to speak to one another and unionize and create companies together. And what they realized was we can't have that. Oh, they needed to create we competition. We need to create competition amongst these people and oh let them my we'll God. throw them a bone, have them all fight amongst each other as to who's the who's the funniest, who's the best, who's the who's who's the most deserving of our attention and love. And <laughs> like children, they will destroy each other. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? That's brilliant. It's fun if you win. It is fun if you yeah. win. Yeah. Megan is the only uh won no, wait a minute. Emmy winner here. Oh yeah. Oh wait. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. You won an Emmy? I did win an Emmy when I was writing for Modern Family. Did I know this and I'm forgetting? I, I, I don't know I, if I I don't I mention it every episode, but this it's seemed like a... It's, it's surprising that it's not sort of up. I know. Yeah. You should maybe I bring it in and put it on house. your desk for a little bit. Yeah. 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 Um, Speaking of Modern Family, uh, I met, I said hello to Jesse Tyler Ferguson, who yeah. I never met. Well, I'm pretty sure had absolutely no idea. <laughs> no, yes, he, no, does. he, does. he does. He does. He does. I, I've had him over for dinner at my house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he knows. He knows. Something. He knows the show. Yeah, he just didn't recognize me. You, maybe you just don't. You don't pop off the show. I think. <laughs> it's more like <laughs> that could be it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, could be it. No, I think know, I look so I, good at the event. I, I look so good. <laughs> that, uh, this guy, he yeah. was like, "This is obviously like some kind of action superhero." You right, did look at all of our wives look really good. I looked back at some of those photos, yeah. and Mary Elizabeth looks amazing. As does Jill. As does Kate. Caitlin. Yeah. And then I look at us, I'm like, yeah. we're just like middle-aged guys. You guys look great. No, nah, we look so? You looked good. good, yeah. You look good. I thought, I thought we, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't like the, uh, I don't like the picture that, that uh, came out of that FX Vanity Fair party of me. I don't know. It's like, we took a, we took like, you know, thir they did, they took like 30 pictures of me. Mm -hmm. And then one they chose, this, I'm like this. I'm like. <laughs> That's not true. You look good. Get over it. <laughs> we'll put that, that fucking the creeps out yeah, there. Like, it, yeah. like, I'm trying on, to find man. it yeah. now. Yeah, you look good. Find that look I'm, like, I'm like, <laughs> he looks great. <crazy. laughs> you know, one shoulders up. I look, I look like uh, I don't know how to. You know, I look like I can't sit up. That could my, be a cool new direction back, for you. My though. back is Lean so into that. Yeah, Lean into like more like ghoul characters. Get more more ghouls and hunchbacks. You got to keep evolving. You know, you got to change. Yeah, that's true. I would love to play more ghouls and hunchbacks. Have you guys ever taken like an online quiz that just totally nailed you as a person? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are we talking like those uh, BuzzFeed uh, quizzes? Like, uh, which Harry Potter character are you? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I was not I was not talking about that, but is that your thing? Yeah, which is it, though? Who which one? Which, which character which are you? You're Draco Malfoy. Oh, he's Draco. You're Draco. He's oh, Draco. that's pretty cool. He was, yeah, he had the slick back hair. That's the guy with the, the blonde? Uh, no, actually, what I'm talking about is an online uh, sleep quiz from Helix Sleep. And let me tell you, this is a, this is a useful tool. I took the Helix sleep quiz. Did and, you take uh, the quiz? Yeah. What I discovered was that uh, I, 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 I'm most at rest on a medium firm mattress, which steered me towards several models and away from several others. You know, I went, I went with Helix's sister brand, Birch Organic, which mm. that, that's the one that I personally love. Take the word of their 10-year warranty and 100-night risk-free sleep trial. If you don't love it, 
They'll even come to pick it up for you. But you will love it. Right now, Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash sunny. All right, gang, guess who we're sponsored by today? Huel. You, you guessed, guessed it. it. You yeah. guessed it. That's right. It's a nutritionally balanced plant-based meal made in less than a... You didn't guess it. Less than, <laughs> less than a minute. It's you know, sometimes when, when we're on the set of Sunny, our days are so packed, it's hard to even stop for 30 minutes to eat lunch. Thank God for Huel. Glenn, I think you love Huel because you get to shake it up. You know what I mean? You don't waste time cooking and cutting and uh, worst of all, chewing. Uh, that's right. I drink my food. Okay. Uh, all I do is add two scoops of Huel to water, shake, and ingest. Okay. I mean, what that, precious seconds, minutes even, back into my day. Well, you also must love that each meal contains 400 calories, 40 grams of expertly sourced premium plant protein, all 26 essential vitamins and minerals, and a scientifically calibrated mix of carbs, good fats, and fibers. Come on and join the club. Go to Huel.com slash Sunny to get a free t-shirt and a free shaker with your first order. That's pretty cool. Rob, you had an experience with the French recently where you, uh, what, what was it? You went to the country. What I'd like to do oh, is France. I'd like to have some French people call in because I want to have some conversations. Now, again, you can't, I'm not going to demonize an entire country. When you say French people, I think we need to clarify. We're talking about people who are from France, like who yes. lived in France, like grew up in France, like yes. possibly most of their lives. Yes. They should have an accent. One of my best it, friends in New York City and my roommate was French. He was wonderful. His family was wonderful. All like, And he would have his friends come in from France and they were fantastic people. Yeah, okay. So obviously it's not an entire nation. But- there is a stereotype about the French that I find to be very often true. I will say though, I I was in Switzerland, right? Yeah. And ha- different half, country. One different side country. is uh, speaks German, and then the the other side that borders France. Yeah. Uh, the primary language is French, and the Swiss French, lovely. Oh well, well like the French Canadians. We're talking about France French. You're talking about the France French. The France French. <laughs> Yeah, it's a whole thing. <laughs> That's a whole thing. I had an almost, and Caitlin will corroborate this entire thing because she was right there and witnessed the whole thing. Okay. It was almost a physical altercation <laughs> with a French woman. <laughs> and I did uh, nothing. She was that literally- kind of hot. She, <laughs> she was not attractive. Oh. She was bumping into right, me. Even better. It was, it was bizarre. All right, set it up. Where it, I'm, take I'm, me there, take I, me there, I, baby. I did not take put my there. cigarette out. You're in my way. I'm in France for a layover. We're on our way to Wales. You're doing a little layup in France, okay? Just a little layup. He's doing layups in France. And we go into this one particular section where they where they, where they they hold you. So you're in uh, the airport. I'm in the airport. <gasps> Everyone's an asshole in the airport. Sure. There is definitely a, a, a higher level of anxiety at an, at an airport. But I think you account for that, especially if you work at the airport, as did this woman. Oh. Yes. So okay. it was in this, like, okay. it was in, like, this food court. Thing. Yeah, this like food court area. And the, the first thing we hear is a woman with an, a British accent. Mm. And she's saying, all I want is a glass of water. Can you just please bring me a glass of water? And this woman is saying in a French accent, which I will not try to replicate, ma'am, please, will, will you just go sit down? If you'd like to fill out a report, you can fill out a report. And she's saying, I don't want a report. I just want a glass of water. There is no water. Now, my first reaction was, Karen. This is a Karen who needs to talk to the manager. Right. And she, th- that's what she kept saying. Like, who is your boss? Where is the manager? And I was like, oh, that's like Karen writ large. Yeah, so yeah, Caitlin yeah. and I kind of roll our eyes. We go sit down. We feel so bad for the employees that they have to deal with this woman. So we then notice that the woman um, doesn't get her glass of water, but she goes over and she's got a baby and the baby, I mean, an infant, right? And the, and the infant is, she, is being rocked by her husband. Her husband is like trying to calm her down. And we're like, what is going on here? But then we look around and there's there's no, nothing, like this is a cafeteria. So yeah. the whole point of it is to eat and, and drink. drink. And all of the water pitchers are completely empty. And all and so we're like, oh, so this woman like wanted wanted some water, which she paid for, because you like pay a fee and then you eat, it's like a buffet style, right? Yeah. So we're like, okay, so I don't know who's in the wrong, who's in the right, whatever. 
a few. But the scales of justice. But the scales of justice. We're watching this and we're like, okay. <laughs> you're eyeing <laughs> <Some you're laughs> who's in the, in the right. <laughs> Absolutely. Now my kids. I'm constantly monitoring the scale. My kids are sitting there, right? My kids are sitting there and Caitlin is sitting there and I'm sitting there and I'm Actually, I feel pretty good. I have a, a full night's sleep on the way over there, so I'm, I'm feeling I'm feeling great. Maybe I'm you excited. got a bottle of smart water in your backpack. Yeah, I didn't have any. <laughs> I didn't have any water. Them. Didn't need any water. Mm -hmm. You were already. But hydrated. I'm watching now. I'm watching. I'm watching what's happening because I'm watching her go back to her husband, and I'm expecting the husband to explode or whatever. But no, he's just like it's okay. Well, he's British. We'll, we'll figure. They don't, yeah, yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> they don't explode. And then she picks up the baby and she's walking around with the baby, and I realize I'm thinking, well, this woman seems kind of actually pretty sweet, and all, all she wanted was a glass of water. And then Caitlin goes over to get a glass of water and there's no water. And she's like, oh, uh -oh. I just want to get a, gla a glass of water. I was like, oh, this is, <laughs> is going to be amazing. <laughs> this is going to be amazing. Yeah. And then she goes, you know what? I just want to, I'm just going to get some, co some coffee. I said, okay. So she goes and fills up some coffee, but she can't find any milk. And we see the milk and the cream is also uh -oh. empty. Now, again, this is not just like a, a lobby of like a random, like a subway station. This is actually there for this very purpose. Right. We pay a fee, you eat the goddamn food. But I'm like, and, and, I, and then Kate, I said, do you want me to get you some milk? And then Caitlin actually said, yeah, but I don't want you to get into a whole thing with the. <laughs> so Rob, Rob, basically you're like, when do, do you want me to step in? Yeah. Do you want yes. me to get involved? Yeah. Yes. Do you and want I said, Rob I will, Justice? I will, to... be, I will be perfectly, perfectly nice and sweet and i will just ask where the at first where the where the milk is <laughs> and so i i now this same woman is over there and she's like cleaning this area right where the milk and the coffee and the, the woman is. that the other woman was asking for water yes, earlier yes yeah. and the woman was very clearly speaking in english to to this woman yeah so i walk over to the woman and i and i recognize i'm not in my own country mm -hmm. and that people speak french i don't speak french but it's an airport. I just watched her speak English. Yeah. So, but I'll be respectful and I'll just say, excuse me. And I'll point to, to the thing and I'll say, do you have any more of this? And I say, hi, excuse me. And she looks up at me and she rolls her eyes immediately. <laughs> and I said, oh, and now I'm already like, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. you're, you're the shirt 10. open yeah. so that Rob Justice <laughs> <laughs> is coming Did out. you ask her if there was a phone booth somewhere where you could <laughs> <laughs> And I said, I, I'm so sorry. Um, uh, do you have any more milk? And I pointed to it. I said, just the milk is empty. And she goes, uh, she said something in French. Mm. And I said, I'm so sorry. I, I don't, I've, I've apologized four times already. Yeah. I'm so sorry. I, I don't, I don't speak French, but I'm just looking for this for milk. And she goes over there. She didn't even say that. She said it in French. She, she like pointed and says like, go, go away, go over there, go over there. And I was like, oh, sorry. Is it over there? And she just looks at me and she goes, and I said, oh, okay. Great. So I go over to the other station, no milk, nothing, just n nothing ar around there. And there's nobody else there. So then there was, I, I walk like around to a different area and there was a woman there and she was dressed in the garb of people who work at, at, at the cafeteria. And I yeah. say, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm looking for milk for coffee. And she just deadpan stares at me and says, I don't speak. And I heard her say English, like, I don't, how do you say I don't speak English in French? Uh, uh, je ne, yeah, je ne parle pas anglais. Yeah, anglais. something along something those like lines. And I, was, and I literally said the same thing. Sorry, I know, I, I, don't, I don't speak French. I just want milk. And she just goes, go away. And I was like, holy shit. <laughs> she said, go, <laughs> go away? Go away. <laughs> I fucking shit you not. Go away. And I was like, oh, I guess you speak English. And then she goes, sir, sir excuse me. And she walks away and I'm like, what the fuck? This is, uh, I feel like this isn't a movie. This isn't, there's no way this yeah, is Yeah, that's outrageous. Can I ask how busy this cafeteria is? Is it like packed is with people? Off? No, no, empty is. Empty. Right? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Sure, yeah, yeah. Empty. Now I walk over to the woman with the baby and I say, hi. And she's like, hi. And I'm like, did you get your glass of water yet? And she was like, no, they just like refused to bring me water. And I'm like, okay, this is fucking nuts. <laughs> so I go back to the woman who was cleaning up it again. And I said, we paid money to be here. I want a glass of water and I want milk. Right. And she says the same thing. Like, I don't, I don't speak English. And then she bumps into me and I don't move. I just stand there. Like she's trying to get past me. Yeah. And she's like, pardon, so pardon, pardon. And she looks right at me and I'm like, go get security, go get security. And she goes, something in French, something in French, something in French. And I was like, I'm not going to move. 
until you bring me a glass of water and milk. Now, Caitlin is like, will you <laughs> fucking stop my kids? She's like, you want milk? You want milk so much? I put my teeth in your milk and I squeeze out the milk, you American swine. Well, that's exactly how I feel. I'm like, am I an ugly American right now, uh, right? So I'm going through the checklist and I'm like, I have apologized 10,000 times. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. have recognized that I don't speak French. I'm not, I'm not suggesting that you should know how to speak English, but you've already demonstrated that you do. Yes. You work in an airport. We paid a fee to be here. And you have a chip on your shoulder about Americans and clearly the British as well, to the point where you want to pick a fight with us for some reason. And I'm just not having it. So I just don't move. And then she goes around me and my kids are just like, dad, 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 stop. And I'm like, Daddy, fuck please. that. <laughs> and now I'm the guy, people are walking in. Oh, dad, just <laughs> please. <laughs> and now like everybody's invested because I, the, when we first walked in, we were so embarrassed for this British woman yeah. who was like making a ruckus. And now everybody is looking at me and this woman because now she's walked away and she's going to talk to her coworker, uh -huh. another coworker, and they're like yelling at me in French and I'm yelling back in, back in English. People are all like watching us. And I'm like, oh, now I'm the, the, the ugly you're American the asshole. Yeah, yeah now I'm the Karen. Yeah, you're the Kevin. And so, so ev eventually s some, nobody brings us water, nobody brings us milk, but they, they restock it. And when I walk back over there, um, I, I said something, to, I just didn't even say anything to her. I just looked at her and she looked at me and I said, what do you want to say? And then she said, uh, she said, um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go get security. And I said, oh, you speak English now. And she goes, yes. And she turns around and walks away. And I was like, what the fuck? This is insane. I can't wait to talk to security. So I get the water, I get the milk, which they've just restocked. I come back. Nobody comes back. Of course. We then we then wind up sitting next to the woman with the baby on the plane. She couldn't have been sweeter. Could have been nicer. Was traveling back from London. All she wanted was a glass of water. Now, again, this could be an isolated incident. It could have been just one person. Or it it's it there's a system. Mm. It's it's there's a systemic issue. Let's find out. With, I think you're right. I think we should have some French people call in. Mm -hmm. Talk about their experiences with Americans and, you know, because maybe, maybe something happened along the lines where, well, of course, now this, these people were doing it to this, uh, this, this British woman as well, exactly. but, but where, you know, they're, they've got a chip on their shoulder specifically about Americans because they find them to be so crass and rude. Sure. I mean, and clearly they do. And then I'm, my behavior is just reinforcing that, but from an, from, but she, she, both, both of the people recognize what the situation was. They, they know that they were the aggressors. They, they, they absolutely know that they brought it. I to mean, that yeah, fuck that shit. It's not, it's not, if you're working as an employee and your job is, you know, serving people water and someone asks you for a glass of water, give them a fucking glass of water. Like, yeah. there's, there's no excuse for that. Yeah. Th I, I think it was like, the, are, are you so entitled that you believe you deserve a glass of water and milk? And the answer yeah, is, yeah, man. well, if I, if I <laughs> if paid, I paid for, for it and it, this yes. is a place of business yeah. and I'm, then yeah. Then I, I am I actually entitled to it. I, I was at the airport once in, in Paris with Mary Elizabeth. And I don't know if you remember, like the, where the baggage comes out, it's like a glass, it's glass. So instead of like LAX where you just don't know where these bags are coming from, you can see the employees, you can see through the glass, right? And they went on break. They went on break for an hour. And you could just see them sitting on the bag, smoking cigarettes. <laughs> and, you're, sitting yeah. on the bag. and you're like, you're like, oh, just well, you. I mean, have your cigarette, but put the bag on the thing and have it come through. <laughs> and I have nowhere to sit. <laughs> then where will I sit? Where will yeah. I sit? If you guys couldn't smoke and, and work at the same time, the entire country would shut down. So <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, yeah. I know you yeah. can do it. <laughs> uh, we know you can do it. Yeah, you're still smoking. Yeah, so I, I guess what I'd like we to do is do I'd like to speak with some French people and I would just want to ask them oh, what wow. their experience is. And is it, and I'm willing to accept this, that that there is just a cultural difference that like being an asshole is, is okay. And again, there are lots of American assholes. Oh yeah, I mean, go to... Yeah, any airport in a major city in America, like the people there are exhausted mm -hmm. and overworked yes. and grumpy, no, and and you know, Jill, Jill and I, Jill and I, uh, twelve years ago, we did a, we, we spent three months traveling around Europe <clears throat> to many different countries, and France definitely stood out as like, yeah, 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 yeah. as being just the people just were rude. They were more rude per yeah. per per square person. <laughs> 
You know what I mean? Not everybody was rude. Certainly not everybody. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. But more people were rude to it us. It seems in more commonly than in acceptable any other as a culture mm. yeah. to be to be rude. We went to like fifteen at, different countries. Yeah. And yeah. The, uh, there was no, it was no comparison, no comparison. Yeah, where does that start? That stereotype comes from something and somewhere. So I, I would like to, I would like to really dig into this. I would like to have the discussion with some I French think, people. Yeah, yeah. I'd also like to get Caitlin's uh, side of what she saw happening because we we then discussed it. And then I, you know, anytime again, like an, an event like that happens with the kids, I sit, I I have to ask them. Like we have to process it because like watching your dad scream at somebody yeah, else yeah, and yeah. back and forth in an airport is like very traumatizing. So we talk about it, but like, I also don't, no. I also want to make sure that they, that, you know, you never want to take things to, to a certain level. But again, I, I don't, I don't think we should be treated a certain way. And if someone's treating you a certain way, I can't imagine your dad screaming at an, at an Sorry, when I say screaming, that's not I know actually raising accurate. your voice in, yes. in, in anger, not screaming, but like, uh, standing your ground with a loud voice. Yes. Um, well, well, because it was it was directed back at me. So they yeah. were trying to like humiliate me, and I was like, I was just return returning it, and I was most likely escalating it. But again, yeah, I have I, you always had that gear. Yes. Yeah. Right. I, I picture you always having that. You get that from your mom. Where does that come from? I don't know. Were you hall monitor at school? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you no, like I, I, confrontation. I, I don't mind confrontation. Way. I'm yeah. the same way. I, I can't, I can't, I can't handle things like that. I don't handle things like that well. I probably would have done something very similar. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, it, and if I back off at this point, it's so that I don't traumatize my kids or or yeah. or scare them or embarrass Jill. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, it, it, but it, like, if I'm by myself, oh, fucking forget about it. <laughs> yeah. Fucking forget about it. I, I, I can't, I can't, I, I'm the same way. I can't stand that shit. It just feels like there are certain people who walk around the world and they just treat people whatever way that they want. And I can't, I know. I don't know. Don't it's just, get called on it. It, yeah. And like, I'm not the one, you're not going to treat me like that. And I don't think I'm going to teach you any lessons. You're probably not going to change, but the lesson I am teaching you right now is get the fuck away from me. Yeah, right. the, your shit ain't gonna work on me. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and yes, of course. Upon reflection, you feel bad, and then I try to process it and say, did I handle that in the best of ways? Like, so the the um, the in and out thing, right? So like, I I came in the next day and we discussed it, and we got. I was really introspective about that and trying to figuring out, try to figure out the next time that something like that happens. I know that there's a better way to handle that, and I have to like work through it. And in this circumstance, I don't know that there really was a better way to handle that. Well, well listen, no one I got think, hurt. I think it could you be didn't. Like, it's hurt. not like no. you injured anyone. You just but it could be a specific your opinions. culture clash, right? Well, and and that is the, like look. And there's no denying the fact that Americans on the ho on the whole, I think, are more entitled. Uh, we live in a more entitled culture than most other cultures. We're like, I am entitled to this. Yes, you know what I mean. And sometimes, sometimes that entitlement is right. You know what I mean? In in this case, I would say that it was, right? Because you paid yes. for a service. The service was not rendered. And so you said, hey, listen, I paid for a thing. I expect to get the thing. The thing is, is like, culturally, I, I think there are a lot of people who are so used to not getting what they want, mm -hmm. not getting what they need, mm -hmm. not getting what, certainly not getting what they desire. And, 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 and they're just, they just realize that it's futile to even, mm -hmm. you know, you realize you're like, you learn to go through life not getting the things that you that that we feel like we're entitled to because we have been so fortunate in this country to yeah. to have so many opportunities so many things you know uh to live in a world where maybe for the most part the scales of justice are more balanced than in other places mm -hmm. uh but now it's at a point where you know everyone's like okay and the american dream where is it yeah uh, i should I'll, i will ha i would have it now <laughs> You know what I mean? But I, I feel like, well, like my no, barometer, for, my barometer for those kinds of things is pretty good. Me meaning like if I just walked around the French airport and was like, bring me water, you know, and I, where's my milk to the, to the random, you know, like baggage handler yeah. um, because I deserve milk. Baggage, that would, that, baggage man. <laughs> yes. That would make me an entitled American asshole. Yes. Right. But if someone's going to charge me, you know, $30 a, a head to come in and eat at your buffet, then yes, I believe I'm in that the third, that the transaction entitles me to a glass. Of water. Yes. And by the way, I a hundred percent agree. I just think, I just think maybe may, I'm just, I'm, I'm pontificating yes. where. It becomes a chicken. It becomes from. a chicken or the egg thing too. Right. Yeah, because right. then those people have dealt with 
the worst versions of the Karens or the Rob Justices over the, <laughs> over the last you know 30 years, to your point, Charlie. And now they just assume everybody's like that. And that and, yeah. they, and they act accordingly. So when you had a chance to talk, you, you haven't had a chance to talk to Caitlin about this and, and her perspective, or you just want her to? No, I, I'd love for her to weigh in because it's always good to hear a third party perspective of God, like yeah. because you're in the middle of the event and then you have other people. Can we call her watching right now? It. Is she? Is she do, do you think she's around? Like you could send her a Zoom link. You guys can Zoom with. Let her. me just call Caitlin and see if she'll okay. just because it might be fun. To And now a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. BetterHelp is an online therapy service that can help you find solutions to a variety of life's problems. Injustice. Injustice. There are so many injustices in the world. Okay. Yeah. Here, Here comes Here Rob we... Justice. Yeah, yeah Rob, Rob Justice. Justice in the house. Okay. Yep. Rob Justice is hell-bent on justice and is willing to die for it. But with convenient, affordable, and entirely online therapy like BetterHelp, Rob Justice can see himself grow into Rob acceptance. Mm, which doesn't sound nearly as angry. Mm -hmm. No, no, he's not. He's actually, he's actually quite zen. So if you're thinking of trying therapy, but you don't know where to start, consider solving that problem by starting with BetterHelp. When you want to be a better problem solver, therapy can help with that, right? So, so visit betterhelp.com slash sunny today and get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp.com slash sunny. Today, we are brought to you by ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter Zip 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 makes it super easy to find the right people for the job. Whatever job it is, you're trying to fill. Do you guys have any jobs? Jobs? Are you asking for a job? I'm poking around for a job a little bit. Now, I could use a relief nanny. You know, someone mm. to step in when my nanny gets sick. Uh, you know, you just have to recognize that she's number one mm -hmm. and you're number two. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, can you handle that? Pass. I'm not going to nanny uh, your children or raise your children. Um, not because I I'm not qualified, because I just don't want to. I only want you to do it if you want to do it. I don't want yeah, to do it. But let me tell you, it. let me tell you who does want to do it. The actual ideal uh, candidate is out there, and and ZipRecruiter is a powerful technology that finds awesome people who have the skills and experience to match your job listing. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. Look, just go to ZipRecruiter. Dot com, put in slash sunny, and then find the employees you're looking for. ZipRecruiter.com slash sunny. Oh, hello? Hello? Hi. Hi. Caitlin. Hello. Hi. Okay, what do you want from me? So I, I wanted to get a um, your point of view of what happened in the French airport lounge cafeteria section that we that we oh, went to. God. Rob told us the whole story about but be, what be went honest, down. Be honest. What's your take on it all? What, from your perspective, was it like when Rob Justice got stepped into the picture <laughs> and got himself involved, you know, put on his cape, put on yeah. his mask, and, you know, ripped his, ripped his uh, shirt open and became Rob Justice? What was that like be for you Be honest. And the kids? Don't do a bit. Tell them exactly what happened. <laughs> How did you feel? How did you feel? How did you feel? <laughs> How did I feel? Well, it escalated very quickly, but it I was I was very happy that he was trying to find me some cream because I found coffee. Now we, I can't find water and I got coffee and I can't find cream and I'm just tired. And I we all were tired. And I said, Do you, I can't find cream for the coffee. And he was like, OK, let me look. And he walked up and he asked this woman mm -hmm. um, where the cream was for the coffee. Did, and I think she kind of ignored you or something. I'm, ha I'm not really paying attention. I just know that very quickly he turned very upset with this person <laughs> and he was like uh, here's the coffee i don't see any cream and then she was like trying to push past him and he was like are you are you trying you want to get by me just go by me don't touch me just go by me she's assaulting me she's assaulting me this french woman i was assaulted at an airport okay uh -huh. i just it looked like she was trying to get away from you and walk by you but you needed your cream but the cream was for me so i'm on board but it, it was it, she was uh -huh. she was physically bumping into me trying to like it was bizarre. She was walking, yes, towards you and trying to get around you. And then, yeah, you threw, you threw the off pecs these. out and your arms up and you're like, you want to go by me? Go by me. <laughs> now, how are you feeling you just, when you see him start to get into the red? Where are you emotionally? Yeah, are you like, ah, oh, shit? Or are you like, yeah, Are yeah. you like, good, I'm glad he's speaking up? Or are you like, oh, Rob, come on, just forget it. I don't really need the cream. Yeah. 
Uh, both because this woman was being an asshole. She was really like aggressively being unhelpful. Okay. So I got that he was upset, but also my kids are right there. And I just kind of would rather, right. you know, maybe I just drink the coffee black. I don't think I needed to turn it to a whole thing, but I do understand why he was upset. <laughs> but see, that's, but wherein lies the problem, right? We paid for the goddamn coffee. We, we paid did. to be in yeah, the we lounge. We paid water. for the food. You're not. And you're, and she shouldn't have to drink. Like, should you have to drink black coffee in real life? Is that a, like a, 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 a huge sacrifice you have to make? Of course not. Who gives a no. shit, really? But, when, but you've paid the goddamn money. Yeah. Where's my fucking creed? But when does standing up for yourself, <laughs> when does it create more problems for yourself? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. when does yeah. it tip over into like, oh, I've upset my children and now it's like it do you was think, not worth it. Do you think Rob is out of line or do you think that that he like- If the kids weren't there, I would have done the exact same thing. I uh -huh. just instantly turned into like mama bear and wanted him to stop so that they weren't like seeing their dad get in a fight over cream because they weren't understanding that she was being an asshole and she was the woman who wasn't giving this woman the water earlier. I recognized her from the previous incident. So I, if they weren't there, I would have done the exact same thing. Well, I so have that, to be honest. That's where it becomes a question though, right? Because if, if Rob's behavior is justified, then he's actually teaching his kids the right thing. That's how I feel in that circumstance. But if it's not, if he shouldn't be acting that mm -hmm. way, then, then, then that's it's okay to stand thing. up for yourself. If depending it on what you're, you know, what my you're, thing is that the kids didn't see all the things leading up to it. They uh, just saw Rob yelling at this foreign woman who didn't right. speak English. <laughs> who, who that, but then she revealed herself to speak English. Correct. That's true. Now they didn't see that either. Again, as as an adult, I saw the whole thing and I understand the whole thing, and I would have been on board. I just I'm more willing to drop it when. Our kids are not seeing any of that. They're just seeing their dad go to right. Well, that's you, because you're you not done, Caitlin Justice. <laughs> well, I was going to say that Caitlin could have been doing a play by play with the kids as they're watching. She could have been the, you know, yeah. the and, and you could have been saying like, you know, that this, no, that this is now justified. had I had cream for my coffee and was comfortable sitting back and sipping while enjoying this scene play out. I right. probably would have been able to do that. But I was uncomfortable, Glenn, because mm. my coffee was black <laughs> and I was mm. tired. And my husband was fighting with a strange woman. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, but did you eventually get your cream? Yeah, he got the cream. Oh, okay, it culminated <laughs> you think, in you getting your cream. Do you your think cream? that you would have gotten the cream without the raised temper? Like if you just kind of kept insisting on just- uh... Well, well, the, that, that's where in lies the, the issue because probably, like there's a version of, the, of this where I get it with I get the cream. But what happened was it started with me wanting cream and then it transitioned to me wanting cream and justice. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the sweet cream of justice <laughs> is the sweetest cream of all. <laughs> and yeah, like doesn't that, doesn't that cream taste so sweet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's so much yeah. better. It is a better cream. Uh, cream, it's cream a with thicker... no justice is curdled milk. <laughs> And that really is that really is the takeaway and what we talk to our kids about afterwards. OK, yeah. so you spoke to them about the cream of justice and you explained. <laughs> yeah, maybe difference. Rob Justice's sidekick should just be a woman that explains all of his behavior to any children that are around so they have the proper context. Uh, yeah. It's just a constant state of processing with children. Dad. This is why dad's behaving this way. That's me. That's me. I did. I did give them a full a full recap afterwards so that they would understand because they were uh, the little one was just like his mouth was open and his eyes were wide. And he was just like shocked and confused. <laughs> so I but backed up. To be fair, by this point, he should not be shocked and confused by my behavior. Yeah, I mean, he's been there and out with true. you. I mean, he should have learned. Yeah, he should have learned. He's getting there. You, you, yeah. you like he's to. I still guy. like to hide it from them. You're really, really trying to get them used to it. But yep, they're getting there. Well, it's they it's, see, you it's can't tough. hide. You can't hide from your kids. They see you. They see. They know. They know. What's they, they, know. know. They, know. <laughs> they know. They know. They <laughs> know. They definitely know what's wrong and who's wrong when Rob's around. That's for sure. <laughs> He'll make sure of that. Well, I, I, we we also are going to, we're going to do a little call-in show where we're going to have people from France, specifically uh -huh. France French people, defend call themselves. in and <laughs> defend, themselves. defend yourself, Frenchman. Defend yourself. In English. In English. <laughs> in English. In English, please. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We will force them to speak English on yeah. the podcast. Uh, and we're going to get their take on it. But what, is, I mean, is your take on, have you had bad or good experiences with the, uh, the? and I'm speaking specifically of French-speaking pe French people from France, not French Canadians. They're lovely. 
Mm-hmm. They're they're lovely, and and we've established that Swiss. French people are, and I imagine that, uh, you know, Belgian, Belgian ones are yeah. as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know. Um, it's just the French French. It's just the French French. French OG. I, it is, is what we're talking about. Is, born can you corroborate bred, that? Born and bred French. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How, have you had- And they are born in bread. Uh, which is part of the uh, oh, Charlie the Vance thing. They're, they're born in a baguette. Not as, not as inbreds, but and, uh, they're born inside. Yeah, they're not inbred, but they're born in a little baguette and uh, they <laughs> come sliding out with a they cigarette. Sliding out. In yeah, like, a beret. <laughs> Got a warm piece of bread. Yeah. Smoking a cigarette. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, yeah. Smoking a little baby Bree cigarette. Cheese. You know what? I will say when we walked out of that lounge, the, the, um, the women that said goodbye to us said goodbye to our kids and were really sweet and told us to have a nice day. So it did end on a on a of nice. Of course, there are, there are not the, not those particular women, different women, different women. Yes. Yeah, yeah, not that, that. That woman was awful. Of, of course, Rob's right. She was a terrible person. She could have been. You know what? She was speaking French. She could have been anything. She just was an all around bad person. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, just bad people are bad people no matter what. Yeah. Um, but that's, that's nationwide, international. That's that international. Is that yeah. is true. Assholes are everywhere. Well, we so are going to get to know, the bottom like, of this. She could be the greatest person, and she's having the worst day. Well, and that's, 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 been that's about. the thing about stereotypes too, though. That once once they are like culturally established or in the zeitgeist, then you are looking for those. You're looking for it. Looking yeah, for right. So, right. Yes. That's why I wanted to point out those very sweet French women that said goodbye to us. Of course. Of course. course. Now, if you'd been screaming about wanting cashew milk and electrolytes to add to the water, (laughs) then that would have been. Of of course. Now you are the asshole. That's a Los Angeles stereotype. Of course. Of course. Well, uh, sweetie, thank you. Keep it together next time. You don't don't need to, um, you know, fly around the world and have justice be served everywhere in front of our children. (laughs) Alone with me? Fine. I, don't I disagree. Know. I don't think okay. he can let it okay, go. Well, I don't think he's going to let that one yeah, go. Yeah, he's like, come on. You know the man you married. This is, uh, you yeah, know what you're getting into. In. It's hardwired. People- Caitlin, how are the Emmy parties? Did you have fun? It was, they were so fun. Yes. And I will say I dragged Rob kicking and screaming. I did. He was very lovely to go with me. And then we both had a really fantastic evening. Did, wasn't it fun? Did you have fun? I had a blast. Yeah, it was great. We had so much fun. Did it, was, was it, were, were, was anyone talking about me? <laughs> I didn't hear anybody mention you at all. Did you doubt that. Oh, uh, not Glenn specifically, <laughs> um, but a lot of people talk about the show. A lot of people. People talk about love Sunday. the show. People like people love the show. Just people not the love Emmys. the show. Can yeah. I also? Can I suggest that <laughs> yeah. there, we have another member of the of the family who is who is equally uh, as interested in justice and in in situations? Mary Elizabeth. Elastair. Yeah, she 100. percent She has the justice uh, gear, which I is love a good counterbalance to me because uh, mm-hmm. I, you know, <laughs> I have the Tom and Mary's gear of just like let's keep not ruffle any. Keep the peace. Keep the yeah. peace. Yeah. Keep the yeah. peace. Don't make the peace. Just keep the existing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The existing whatever shred of it is left. Yeah, yeah, whatever yeah, shred yeah. of it is left. If there's it. any, yeah, whatever, whatever piece there is, <laughs> even if the piece is injustice, that's fine. That's sure. a kind of a. An existing piece, but I don't like that. It's not a good quality. You know, it's. Um, you don't like that in yourself. Yeah. You wish there was a little bit more Rob Justice in you, yeah. is what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. I think there's a balance. Like everyone needs a little bit of it. I think Glenn and I are similar where the, I I can let a lot of things go. And I'm also like really compassionate. Like, and I always putting myself in somebody else's shoes and I'm like, it's fine. She clearly this or he clearly that. But when someone has zero regard mm-hmm. for how their behavior is affecting people around them, I can't take that. And like, if I get caught in the middle of that, I have to Yep, we, yes. we established that, that that was my number one yep. uh, personality trait, right? Yeah, like, yeah. What was it? We did. We made some kind of a list of like things, and you guessed. Oh, it was it was when we were we were like it was the dating game one where we yeah. were trying to figure out who knew mm-hmm. the most about what, the other. What made you the most angry? Was yeah, people being inconsiderate? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. People not, not people not By being aware way, of I, how their actions affect others. I feel that stuff too. But what happens is I get I bury it down inside. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It gets tucked inside. And then look, it co- it can come out on screen and in, in character form. Sure. And uh, it's a very useful tool, but it doesn't come out in, in life. Yeah. I got it you, on lockdown. You like to write it for my character, though. I, and I write it in you your write character. You write it into my character yeah. a lot. But big emotional swings were not, were very, you know, that's not a very. That's why you like, because you really love writing my character. Like, oh I, my I feel God, like. It's my favorite one to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, yeah, I like to stuff that shit down yeah. inside deep. 
And uh, I feel it. I'm vibrating now thinking about it. <laughs> but, <yeah. laughs> well, sweetie, thank you for uh, glorifying me and corroborating uh, everything. Thank that you I, for getting me cream. I love you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's not sure that's what happened there, But that's okay. the way I heard it and saw it. That's the way he chooses to hear it. And yeah. that's how it is. Love you. All right. We bye love bye. you, Caitlin. We love bye. you. Bye. Love your guts. Bye. Love your fucking guts. Well, have we done it? We did it. I think. Every, I think we. I, I think the main goal here is to always have people walk away from listening to our podcast having learned something. Rob, justice, and Caitlin context. Uh -huh. Maybe Caitlin that will be the name of this episode. Uh -huh. oh, or the cream of justice. <laughs> the sweet cream of justice. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. The sweet yeah. Cream of it always rises to the top. <laughs> the sweet cream of justice the always rises. The cream, rises. Rises. The cream that you're always talking about. Yeah, <laughs> you're always talking about that. And it rises to the top. Man.